So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is part three of 1Q84. This is my mum's copy, it is a bind up of all three parts, but I'm only going to be talking about part three because I have already done a review for part one and two so I'll put a link to that down below. And I read that quite a long time ago so it's a pretty old review. But I read part three very recently with Vanessa whose channel is Chaboski. I'll put a link to her channel below. It was the first bunny read we'd done together and I really enjoyed it so I had a great time. I actually started reading Murakami by reading 1Q84 part one and two. I had not read anything else by him before I started reading it and I found it really interesting, really ethereal, really lyrical but weird, really weird, because he is a weird writer and I would definitely say that Murakami is one of the few writers who seems to get magical realism done well in a longer format. This book is 925 pages but the third part is only about 300 pages so each part is sort of an average book. I really like the third part a lot more than I like the first and second even though I still gave the first and second a four stars. I thought the third part was much more captivating in terms of pacing one thing I liked about this is he wrote the first and second part together or quite soon after each other and then the third part he wrote a fairly long time after that I believe and no one really expected him to write the third part which he did and it kind of explained a lot of what happened in the first and second so I'm really glad that there is a third part because it made a lot more sense when you'd read that. Nothing necessarily gets explained completely in the third part. We don't get told how the magic of this world works. We don't get told exactly where it all comes from, but it's beautifully written and it's very, very interesting and thought provoking in terms of what it covers and the people it encounters and the crazy little things that go on. This basically is set in the world of 1Q84, which is basically an alternative world to where we live. And in this world of 1Q84, there are two moons the regular moon and then a little green moon that's also in the sky. We follow two main characters, Tengo and Aomame. Tengo is a young man, he has been involved in writing a story called Air Chrysalis. He wrote the story for a lady called Fuko Enki, I believe her name is. She initially wrote it and then he helped her to edit it and publish it, but this story is basically a magical story and it actually takes influence from what she has seen and heard of in the real world of 1Q84, so it does include some crazy magical things. And he wrote the story not really realising this, not really realising it was taken from real life, or at least her version of real life, and it got him into a bit of trouble with a religious group. Aomami used to be part of the religious group. Her family were part of the religious group and she has broken away from the religion, she never wanted to be part of it, but she is still connected to what they believe in and she's still connected to some of the ideas that they talk about and involve in their day-to-day -day religion and worship. It's a really weird story because it talks about people called little people who I, I imagine them to be little pixies and little creepy goblin-y type people and it talks about the idea of having two moons in the sky at night and only a few people can see it and some people don't realise that they're living in the world of 1Q84 and some people do and it talks about the ideas of stalkers. There are creepy stalkers in this book. We actually get a third point of view in the third part which is from Ushikawa and Ushikawa is a creep. <laughs> He's definitely a creepy guy. He stalks people, he finds out information about them and he follows them and he, he delves into their lives and he tries to imagine what it's like to be them and who they are and where they come from and what they would do next because he's a kind of investigator. He's creepy, I didn't like him, I definitely didn't like him, but I found him so fascinating to read about. Each of the characters have their own storyline that don't really cross over much in this book, or part three of the book. We actually don't see a lot of movement from any of the storylines except Ishikawa's. Ishikawa is investigating the other two main characters throughout most of the third part, and he's trying to catch up to where they are and catch up to what they're doing and sort of follow the trail that they've left and find out where they're hiding. Tengo is mostly concerned with his father who is dying at the moment and he is visiting him but he also gets involved in some strange sort of weird drug use and weird hallucinations and moments of sort of strange insight from odd little characters. And also Ayamami is trapped inside her apartment. She's in hiding because of something that happened in the first and second part and she doesn't really move around very much but we get to see that there is stuff going on with her story 
and she has some interesting developments that are coming into the story and definitely affect Tengo, but they need to somehow reconnect. And it's kind of the story of how the two of them are trying to reconnect with each other and Ishikawa is trying to catch up to them and stop them from escaping him and the religious organisation that he's working for. One thing I will say about Haruki Murakami is he's not afraid of some weird stuff. There are things like reincarnation hinted at, there are drugs, there are cats, there are crazy, crazy things going on in this story and it is wacky, it is weird, it is magical realism at its finest and I think he does it very, very well. I do think he's a peculiar writer. I would love to experience more of his stuff because all I've read by him so far is all of 1Q84 and The Strange Library, but both of them are just peculiar little things and I do find myself very enchanted by his writing. I think talking about this with Vanessa definitely helped get it straight in my head and there are some weird things where he, we talked about some crazy theories of what he was trying to go for and some of it is messed up, some of it is really weird. But he's a great writer and it's very lyrical and very beautiful so I have been told by some people that they don't want to start with 1Q84 as his first ever book that they read. I think it's a fine place to start, I think it's a good one. I would also say that Strange Library is probably a great place to start because that one's really short and really easy to get into. But if you want to just dive into the big one, if you want to just give it a go, I really like this. I gave all three parts 4 out of 5 stars, including the third part that I just read, 4 out of 5 stars. And I would say that if you like weird stuff, you'll probably like it, because it is weird. But it's beautiful, and it's, it's thought-provoking, and it makes you think, and it makes you ponder, and it makes you really weirded out. It's very odd. It's very odd. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I would love to hear your thoughts on the story, on the book generally, on all three parts. That's all I have to say, really. Thank you all for watching. Leave me all your comments, and I will talk to you all soon in another video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat.